what we're going to talk about right now is how you can really make sure you're understanding the relationships of notes and, the, and the, all the note values involved here. So what this question here is asking is a 30 second note, so you identify that because of the three flags, how many of them equal one quarter note? So you have to remember what we talked about last lesson and realize that 32nd is here, there's two of those in a 16th note, two of those in an 8th note, two of those in a quarter note. So two 8th notes, four 16th notes, eight 32nd notes. Again, if you have a quarter note in a quarter note, there would be two 8th notes, four 16th notes, eight 32nd notes. So you're just doubling, two, four, eight. Here, this next question is asking you the dotted quarter note, how many dotted quarter notes are in a dotted half note? Well, if we forget the dot part for a second, it's almost like uh, in math where you reduce and you can cut out the same thing on each side. You can do that with figuring out with the dot. You just say, well, I'm just gonna ignore the dot for a second here. I have a half note, one half note, how many quarter notes go in that? The answer is two. The dot will, will, will you can add the dot back in and it ends up being the same because this is half. <clears throat> Since the dot is always asking for half of this, when you double it, it's gonna come out fine. Okay, so two dotted quarters and a dotted half note. Another way to do this is to, to give yourself a, um, an example of a time signature and talk in terms of beats. You don't need to. You can do it just simply by the relationships, irregardless of what equals a beat. But sometimes giving it a beat makes it easier. So if you say, well, I'm going to use 4-4, four, because four, that's the most common. In 4-4, four, four, a dotted half note gets three beats. That gets one and a half. One and a half plus one and a half equals three. You can figure it out that way as well. Here, we have a 16th note. How many of those in a dotted quarter? Well, we know that there's four in a regular quarter note. The dot is half of that. That would be two. Four plus two, we get six. Because this dot, when it's after a quarter note, represents an eighth note. So it's a quarter note plus an eighth note. There's four sixteenths in a quarter note, two sixteenth notes in an eighth note. Therefore, our answer is six. This has three kind of flags, not exactly flags, but flag-like indicators, meaning that that is a 30-second rest. And the question is, how many 30-second rests go into an eighth rest? Well, two 16th notes go into an eighth. So four 30 seconds would go into that eighth rest. Here we have a dotted half rest and a dotted whole rest. Just so you know, last class I mistakenly, in the heat of the moment, said that the whole rest hangs from the third line, hangs from the fourth line. So a whole rest is like so, and a half rest is like so. So again, whole rest is from the fourth line, from the third line. We can do the same thing. We can cancel out the dots and say, well, we have a whole rest. How many of these half rests go in there? Two. And the dot, you can just add back in. Here, we have a dotted quarter rest and a sixteenth rest. This is going to be the exact same thing as what we just did here, but in rest form. So the answer will be six as well. Here we have a double, double dotted half note. We did not talk about that. So a double dotted half note. So a half note, when you put the first dot, it means half of that. So half of a half note is a quarter note. When you put a second dot, it's half of the dot. So what's half of a quarter note? That would be an eighth note. 
So a double, double dotted half note is the same thing as saying a half note plus a quarter note plus an eighth note. That's what the, the second dot is half of the dot that preceded it. So we then are asked how many eighth notes go into this? Well, there's one, another two, and we know that there's four that go into a half note, so the answer would be seven. And so what this exercise does is it just helps you really understand those relationships of the note values, understanding how the dot modifies note values. The next thing we want to review, and just make sure we put it into practice, is how we can identify in the relationships of the beat and meter type, so whether something is a simple or compound meter, whether it is duple, triple, or quadruple meter, right? So is it a simple or compound beat, meter type, duple, triple, or quadruple? Those are the ones we're dealing with right now. What note equals one beat? What do you tap? Keep in mind the difference between simple and compound. Things get a little bit complicated there. The division of the beat. In a simple meter, the division of the beat is always into two parts. In a compound meter, the division of the beat is always into three parts. And then what are actual time signatures? And if you have some of this information, you should be able to figure out the rest. This C stands for common time. Common time is the same thing as 4-4. Four, four. When the number on top is 2, 3, or 4, we're talking about a simple meter. So we know it is simple. We can write that in. And we know we just take that number, and that's what it is. So it's simple quadruple. The top number tells us that. The bottom number, 4, tells us that the quarter note equals 1B. 4 quarter. So quarter note equals 1B. So we draw the quarter note right there. Which means the division of the beat is that whatever note value there's two of that goes into a quarter note, which is two eighth notes. That's how I would complete that chart. Now, if I go to simple triple, I can't just jump to here and write the time signature. You don't have enough information. Simple triple, you can't say three, four. How do you know quarter note gets a beat? Why not 3-8 or 3-2? You don't know. So in this case, we need two pieces of information. We know that it's simple, which means that the division of the beat is going to be into two pieces. So if we say, aha, half note is our beat, the division is going to be into two pieces, which would be two quarter notes. And we know that this half note is our beat, so that means that's our bottom number, the two. That's our beat, the half note. It's simple, so that means that we just write the three. We don't need to do anything fancy to that triple part. So the answer will be three, two is our time signature. Three means simple triple, <coughs> two means half note gets the beat. So we can work back and double check our work. Simple duple, again, with just this information, we, we know that it's going to be a two on the top, but we don't know what the bottom is. Well, the division of the beat is going to help us figure that out. If the division of the beat is two sixteenths, that means the beat is what these two would add up to, which would be an eighth note, which means we write eight as the bottom number for our time signature. So 2-8 would be our time signature. Now here, we're going to transition to compound triple. So compound triple. I can tell you right off the bat that what that means, compound means it's dividing into three. So you kind of multiply whatever this part is, duple, triple, or quadruple, by three. So compound, triple, three times three. Top number is going to be a nine. Now it says our beat is the dotted quarter note, 
which means our subdivision of the beat is into three things. So what three note values go into a dotted quarter? The answer is three eighth notes. Now, to get the bottom number for our time signature, with a compound meter, we take it from our division of the beat. So these are eighth notes, and we put that right there. So we put an eighth, so nine eighth. Let me tell you that difference again. When we're looking for the bottom number of our time, time signature, in a simple meter, we take that from the beat note. When we're doing a compound, we take it from the division note. And that's the big difference. So here we have 6, 16. The 6 tells us that it's compound meter. Because 6, 9, and 12 are our compound meters. And 3 times what equals 6? 3 times 2. So that means it's a duple meter. So 6 is our duple, 9 is our triple, and 12 is our, is our quadruple. The 16 is our division of the beat, we just said, right? So we have three 16th notes as the division of our beat. Three 16th notes, add them into one note value, it would be a dotted eighth note. So if dotted eighth is our beat, then we then say, ah, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the 16th notes. So one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm pointing to the note value that I'm singing. 616. Here, we have a 12 on the top. That means we are in compound, quadruple. The eighth note, three eighth notes are the subdivision. So we know it's 12 eight. Can write that in right there. Eighth note plus eighth note plus eighth note equals dotted quarter note. And then our last example, compound duple. That means we, the top number is a six. How do we know what the bottom number is? Well, here's our division of the beat. That's what it'll tell you. These are quarter notes. Therefore, a four goes on the bottom. How do we add it? Quarter plus a quarter is a half plus one more dotted half. You'll notice that in all of our compound meters, we have dotted note values as our beat. And then three notes that go into the subdivision of that beat. So with that, you should have a good understanding of how the time signatures are determined and how that works. Now, training your eye to read these different time signatures is a good challenge. So, one thing you can do is take a melody in 2-4, which is fairly common. Most people can read that like, oh, quarter note equals the beat, eighth note is two beats, and you go da 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 Oh, great. No problem. What if we had to convert this into 2-2? Two, two? In 2-2, two, two, no longer does the quarter note equal the beat. Now the half note equals the beat. And the subdivision of the beat is now the quarter note. Everything gets doubled. Eighth notes become quarter notes, quarter notes become half notes. So if we were to rewrite it as 2-2, two, two, we go quarter, quarter, half, quarter, quarter, half, quarter, quarter. Now here we have a dotted eighth. When we double it, it's going to be a dotted quarter. The 16th note becomes an eighth note. The half note becomes a whole note. And that's how it would look, the exact same rhythm in 2-2. Two, two. Another way to say 2-2 two, two is cut time. So you take common time, you put a line through it, you call that cut time. Same thing as saying 2-2. Two, two. A lot of marches 
like John Philip Sousa marches, are in cut time. What's the difference between cut time, or 2-2, two -two, and 4-4, four -four, or common time? It's this, by just changing the time of the signature, I don't need to do anything here. I can write the exact same thing. How is that going to be performed differently? It goes back to what we talked back talked in less, last lesson. Here, this now means strong, weak, medium, weak. Whereas before, it was strong, weak, strong, weak. Or, uh, you know, strong, weak, strong, weak. I'm sorry. In 2-2, two, two, it would have been strong, weak, strong, weak. So this would be as if it were in 2-4. And if it were in 4-4, four, four, we now have strong, weak, medium, weak. Because the beat is going to feel like it's going faster here. You're going to have more of that bum 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 as opposed to da 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 or da 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 It's going to be, have a different rhythmic feel depending on how you pulse it, how you accent it. So that's how meter ends up being different. So some interesting subtleties there that are worth being aware of. So you can say, Dr. Brolox, why do we need to, why not just write it all at 404? Four, four, why make it so complicated? Actually, those time signatures tell you what to do as a performer, both in terms of tempo and accent. And by changing the time signature, it should be performed differently. So it's not just a matter of semantics and uh, like a little mind math game. There's actually practical applications on what different time signatures should mean and how you perform a piece of music. All right, so this next thing I want to talk about here is, is, uh, is something new. The question here is, I'm giving you a time signature, I'm giving you a rhythm, and I want you to figure out how, what rests you would put to complete a measure. Let me say that again. I'm giving you the time signature. I give you some note values. And then the rest of the measure needs to be filled with rests so that you have a complete measure. And the question is now, how do you figure that out? 6-8 was one of these, but we can figure that out. We need 6 eighth notes in there, or the equivalent. Quarter note takes care of two of them, right? And now we need four more eighth notes. Well, how do we write that? We do not write one, two, three, four eighth notes. That's not how we write it. We don't say, oh, four eighth notes, that's a half rest. We're just going to, instead, we're just going to write a half rest. No, we don't do that either. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the beat is obvious in the way we write the rests. The beat in 6-8 is the dotted quarter. So if we have a quarter note, what's left over that we need to make a dotted quarter? The answer is an eighth note. So now, this is one beat. And what's left after that? Another beat, which in this case is the dotted quarter. The dotted quarter rest. That's how you would write it. You could write it like that, or even better, like that. Why do we write it specifically this way? We don't write quarter note, dotted quarter rest, eighth note. We don't do that either. This would also be wrong. We write it like this. So we could say, here's beat one. Here's beat two. Look how I could circle them in their entirety. And it's really, really clear. So this way of notating is what is easiest for the performer to read. So you can be tapping your foot as a performer and go, da, there's a rest. And you can just follow along and be like, well, here's the beginning of that beat. Here's the beginning of that beat. So that clarity is actually very important. With that same idea, here we have a measure of 3-4. We have a half note, 16th note, 8th note. So this is 
two beats, one fourth of a beat, half of a beat. What do I need? What's left to create three full beats? The answer is a fourth. So that is a 16th rest. I just put the 16th rest. There's nothing, since that's all I need, this one was really easy. Here, we've got 12-4. That means there's got to be 12 quarter notes worth of rhythm. If we do it in thirds, we could say, well, a half note is two-thirds of a beat, a quarter note is a third, there we go, there's one beat, that's one beat, that's one beat, that's a third of a beat. So. There's one, two, three, we need one, one more beat, that's one third, we need two thirds rest. Well, there's no two third rest, but we can do two quarter notes. We would not put a, a half rest, because half rest is the idea is that it's half of the measure. So in 4-4, four, four, half rest is two beats. But that's not what it means. It just, in 4-4, four, four, that's what it happens to be. But what we actually need is two quarter notes. And that's the way we actually indicate it here. So again, we can circle. There's one beat, two, three, four. And it's very clear visual. So what you're going to be asked to do going forward is figure this out. And some of it, this is the most complicated one. Because you, you have to actually write two rests, and they're not the same note, they're, they're not the same value. And you have to figure out how you break that apart such that the beat is clearly indicated. All right, let's do another permutation of that same kind of question. Okay, let's see here. Um, Let's have write that, and then I'm going to write, uh, let's see. these three examples, I'm giving you the rhythm for an entire measure. And I'm going to ask you, what's the time signature? I'll say that again. Here's the rhythm for an entire measure. What is the time signature? So when I look at this, here's how I do it. This has lots of beats in it. So I'm thinking, boy. And it's got a dotted value. So the first thing I think of is probably a compound meter. Which one? Well, if I were to try to find patterns, here's a group of three. There's another group of three. There's another group of three, or the, the value thereof. So I say, huh, this looks like triple meter and a compound. Right? So that would be a 9 on top. And it looks like quarter note is my subdivision. So I would say that is 9-4. And I would double check and be like, well, if it's 9-4, that means there's got to be 9 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, that adds up. And I should be able to clearly see that we got the, the three larger beats. I do. I can, you can see by what I circled, there are your three beats. Um, looking at this example, I see a quarter note and two sixteenths. Well, 
I know quarter note can't equal the beat, because I don't have, I have one and a half. That's not enough, though. We, we need a, an even number. Here's two sixteenth notes that are beamed. Well, when you beam something, that often means it's a, a subdivision of a beat. Often. So let me start with that idea. Well, if I have two sixteenth notes beamed, that equals one eighth note. So what if I used eighth note as my beat? There would be two eighth notes here, and this would be one eighth note. That seems to make sense. Two eighth notes, half, half. Add that up, I can get three eight as my time signature. Then lastly here, I see dotted note values. I see groups of three. I immediately think compound meter. Here I see, see groups of two. That's why I went for a simple meter. So I say, okay, if the eighth note here is looks like it's being together in groups of three, it's probably an eight on the bottom. Then the question is, how many do I have? So this would be one B. Here's, that's two eighth notes, one. Got to add up to three. There's three. There's another one. One plus two. There we go. So each one has three eighth notes in it. So there's one, two, three, four. That means the top number would be a 12. All right. So these are some of the things you're going to be asked to do, including, uh, and we're going to talk more about this next time, how to, how to restructure the beaming if it's beamed incorrectly. So start thinking about that, and that'll have to do with what we've been seeing and what we talked about with adding the rests to complete a measure. Thanks so much. Have a great day.